so elated to be here tonight. I'm going to begin my remarks by quoting another world famous social entrepreneur and leader, that is Derek Mitchell, CEO <laughs> of Partners for School Innovation, which is that every success story is a support story. SV2 exists because of everybody in this room and because of the hundreds of individuals who have believed that there is a more impactful, better way that we can be giving in our world. We are here because of your belief in us. And this organization never would have been possible without so many shining lights in the SV2 community. I see many of them here tonight. I see Lisa Sonsini, I see Steve Kirsch, I see Darian Charlene Cabsonal, and many others who have been with us since the very beginning. But tonight, it is such an honor and joy for me to recognize an individual whose light shines so radiantly, not only here in SV2, but so far beyond, and that individual is Mark Parnes. Mark, come join me. Mark, up here with me locked in a vice grip, a philanthropic vice grip. A few words about you, oh my. my beloved friend. I define a philanthropist as anyone who gives anything, whether it is their time, their expertise, their passion, their compassion, their networks, their dollars, their heart in any amount. And in my mind and in my heart, the very best philanthropists are individuals who give in all of those ways and give boundlessly. In my mind, the best philanthropists are individuals who give not reactively, but proactively, and who give not sympathetically, but strategically. Mark Parnes is an individual who has given boundlessly to this organization and to easily over half of the grantees in our 30 plus grantee portfolio in, in such extraordinarily generous ways. He has been with us since the very beginning since our very first event, he has given to us his mind. He has given us literally thousands of hours of his <laughs> legal expertise. He is the primary reason that we were able to go from a fund at the Silicon Valley Community Foundation to an independent nonprofit because of the tireless efforts that he gave to us. He has not only been a leading member of our community in our grant making and in our governance and having served on our board since 2004 and as secretary of our board for the last several years, but he has also given us a community in providing us a physical home for so many of our meetings, our grant making meetings, our board meetings, our advisory board meetings. Most importantly, Mark has given so much spiritually to who we are as an organization. Mark embodies generosity and selflessness and grace in 
all of his service, to me, he is the very best of what it means to be a philanthropist. And my admiration for you, my beloved friend, is boundless. Take this off. Yeah. It's yeah. Hard to pull. yeah. Wow, Laura. <laughs> and thank you all. Now that I have the mic, <laughs> I'd like to say a couple things about Laura and then share, particularly with the people who have not yet joined SV2, because we're going to recruit you hard tonight, um, what SV2 has meant to me and, uh, and my philanthropic journey. Laura is an extraordinary friend, and I think she's a teacher for all of us uh, about what philanthropy really means. You know, at one level, philanthropy is utilizing your time, your talent, your treasure to affect social change, to alleviate suffering. But at a deeper level, philanthropy is really a spiritual path to becoming one with God with each of us and with the planet. And each spiritual tradition talks about that path. In Judaism, it's tikkun olam, healing the world. In Hinduism, it's the path of karma yoga, which is a path of service to approach God. In Buddhism, it's the vow of the bodhisattva to help all sentient beings achieve enlightenment. In Islam, zakat, charity in service of God. And we all know what Jesus said, love God with all of your heart, your soul, your mind, and love each other as he loved us. It's one thing to read about those paths. It's another to live that path every day. Laura is a tremendously spiritual person. And for the last 12 years that I have known her, she has brought her heart, her soul, her mind, and yes, her considerable resources to SV2 and allowed us to thrive. And I think everyone in this room owes you a tremendous debt of gratitude. And I am so grateful for everything that you do. And I can't wait to read Giving 2.0. <laughs> So for the new folks in the audience, you know, what has SV2 meant to me? How has it helped me on my spiritual philanthropic path? And I, I'd just share four things that I think really make SV2 unique. One is our grantees. We have a veritable all-star list of social entrepreneurs in this valley. I, I think of Paige Tompkins, who you saw in the video from Reach, Chuck Slaughter, Living Goods. I think of Ashley Bourne at Sustainable Conservation. I think of Renee Zimmerman at Family Connections. Elise Cutini at Silicon Valley Children's Fund. Krista Gannon at Fly. Ellen Moyer at New Teacher Center. I think of Michael Lombardo at Reading Partners. I think of Eric Weaver at Opportunity Fund. I think of Greg Lippman from ACE. The list goes on and on. <clears throat> I have been fortunate to be able to provide some pro bono services to them. And it really has been a highlight of my legal career to be involved with them and help them in some small way achieve the impact that they're trying to achieve. It also has given me a feeling that our philanthropic dollars could not be better spent. When you look at the people that we're supporting and this most recent class who have joined us, Really, you could not make a better investment of your dollars, your time, and your talent. Second, the partnership. If you look around this room, all of the partners that have joined this partnership are incredibly accomplished people. They've achieved a lot. But what has struck me is the humility that all of us have approached this whole philanthropic journey We've tried to be, uh, develop a learning community to try to do good in the community. And all of us has helped each other to grow as philanthropists. I think of the social problems that we're trying to address in the environmental group, climate change, in the education group, 
the crisis in public education. In the international group, global poverty. I mean, these are tough issues, but all of us are trying to do the best we can to make an impact and to help solve those problems. Three, the network. When you think about the Valley, think about the network that we are a part of. Our host tonight, the Moore Foundation, you think of Hewlett, you think of Packard, you think of Skoll, you think of Sobrato, you think of Ariaga and now Andreessen Foundations, you think of Draper Richards, you think of the Capsonels, you think of the Kirsches, you think of the Community Foundation, you think of the Louders, and Laura was on the, the, that great film, by the way, it's terrific. You think of, and, and this is tough for a Cal guy to say, but you think of Stanford. You think of Laura's contacts at the B School. You think of Gina Jorash at the Center for Social Innovation. You think of Kim Meredith with PAX. You think of June Yoon and the, the contacts he's had at the Design School. It's an extraordinary community. And the two things that strike me are, one, an average Joe like me can get access through SB2 to this incredible talent that, who has thought deeply about how to do philanthropy. And it's all available. And it's helped jumpstart, certainly, Diane and my philanthropy, as well as helped all of us become better philanthropists. Uh, I think it's an extraordinary community. And, and it's unique on the globe when you think about it. Finally, the. Uh, the last thing which any journey requires, which is fun. SD2 knows how to throw a party. We, have, we get the kids involved. We invite each other to each other's houses. And a little known fact, SV2 can provide romance in one's life. <laughs> <laughs> My lovely wife, Diane, who is stuck in traffic, so she's sitting in the back of the room. There was one event, I remember, it was over at the Hewlett uh, Magnificent Building on Sand Hill. And Diane was on a panel talking about the Sobrato strategy of capacity building grants versus program grants. And of course, after the lecture, I was immediately smitten. And I had to ask her for a date. And she said yes. So Diane, I'm so grateful for you my partner, my love, my guiding light, my fellow philanthropic nerd. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm so grateful. And, you know, Lindsay, I, I think I have a new tagline for SV2. SV2, better than eHarmony. <laughs> <laughs> so, like many things in life, I've received far more than I've given to this organization. But let me say, on a more serious note, you know, Diane, Diane and I were reflecting on the events of this weekend, 9-11. We've had a rough decade. We had the dot-com bus. We had 9-11. We had a two, two wars. We've had a global recession. SV2 is tackling big problems, serious problems, as you heard tonight from Derek, from uh, Lisa, from... Maureen. The one thing that gives me confidence is the passion, the creativity, the intelligence, the soulfulness of everyone in this room and the powerful community that we're a part of. It, it actually gives me hope that we can address those problems. So for those of you who have not yet joined SV2, what are you waiting for? Sign <laughs> up right now. And for the rest of us, you know, let's enjoy the rest of the evening, uh, but let's get back to work tomorrow. <laughs> so thank you, Laura, for this incredible award. I'm deeply honored and humbled because you've set a standard of excellence that is a very high bar that I don't think I got over, but I'll take it anyway. <laughs>